Baylor's Director of Athletics, Mac Rhodes on Sikkim 365 Radio with Craig Paul and also me, David Smoke. Mac, thanks for your time. Uh, how was the Dickie V weekend? Oh, it was fabulous. It's, uh, you know, for all our, our uh, Baylor family, uh, you would have been really, really proud of, of Coach Drew and uh, to be honored at the uh, – at the Dickie V Gala on uh, on Friday night uh, was was awesome, and you know he he had an opportunity to, to get up and speak for a few minutes in front of about nine hundred people and uh, raised a lot of money over eleven million uh, eleven million dollars for uh, uh, for pediatric uh, cancer, and as you know, that's a passion of Dickie V, and and um, you know to see him up there as well after all he's battled through. Uh, was was special so it was a it was a great event and uh, a great cause purpose and uh, and a lot of fun you were in phoenix last week as were most everybody i guess imaginable in college athletics uh, uh, with various meetings or whatever else let's start with uh, what we have seen since then the nil and someone trying to put the genie back in the bottle or retroactively penalizing anybody if they've been found to have used inducements. Do you really think any of that's going to ever help? You know, I'm, it's a, it's a fair question. And, uh, you know, I think there's a lot of skepticism. Um, and, and I, you know, quite frankly, maybe I've got, I've got some of it as, as well. Um, you know, smoke, I'm, I'm hopeful. Um, you know, we, we need some, some guardrails. We, we've talked about it, right. Um, it's, it's been, exploited to the uh the to the the maximum right all all we're doing is is paying student athletes it's it's become a a loophole for pay for play and uh and so hopefully you know we can um you know better better navigate better monitor better better enforce and you know what what the NCAA came out with yesterday and in, in the board of governors, right there, those are no, you know, th- those aren't any new rules. Um, more, more reminders, right. You know, obviously, you know, reminding everybody and explicitly, you know, defining, you know, these, these third party NLI collectives as boosters. Um, we've, we've known that now, maybe, maybe some of us have forgotten that, but, but you know, make no mistake. Um, I don't just given current NCAA rules and bylaws. Um, there's there's no other way that you could have interpreted them as as being anything other than 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 boosters. And then you know, probably the biggest key. And and again, not a not a new rule, but but just you know, a reminder that that boosters cannot you know, in any form, be involved in the recruitment of, of prospective student-athletes. And quite frankly, that's happened. That's, that's happened and, and is happening. And, um, you know, I, I think one of the, the things that, that I talked to, to Dr. Livingstone about was um, just in general conversation was, you know, now we can – we can remind people of those things, but, but does the NCA have the capacity then to, to go and enforce and, and, and monitor. And, uh, I'm, I'm a you know, for the most egregious example, um, assuming they, they have credible information. Um, and, and I'm also a big believer that, you know, the, the, the student athlete shouldn't be, be punished. Um, but, but that, that, and so we'll, We'll see what happens. Um, I do think back to your original question, um, and, and I apologize for the long answer. I, I think if um, there are incidences where you know steps in and and does it swiftly, and and uh, and there are penalties, I, I do think that will catch. And uh, and I think probably today, this this morning, everybody was having a second and third meeting with their collectives and need to do what, uh, what maybe they've already been doing. So sorry for the long answer. Mac, but it, does the NCAA happen there? Yeah. And I think, you know, Paul, I think that's fair. That's, that's one of the things that, you know, I spoke to is, you know, 
you know, and that would mind people and then, you know, make a, make a statement, you know, that it's, that you're directing it, your, your enforcement staff to related recruiting violations and, unless, you know, they, they've got the capacity to do so. So, um, it's a, you're, you're right on. It's a, it's a fair point. Otherwise, it's just, again, um, talking with, without, you know, without any, any action. Mac, uh, your men's tennis team is on to the round of 16 after a couple of wins this past weekend. I know you've talked plenty about the, the job that Michael Woodson has done, but spring sports are starting to, to wind down a bit. So uh, you having fun seeing their journey and, and where it's taken them so far? Yeah, I am. You know, again, a, a great job by by uh, Coach Woodson and and the staff and our and our young man. You know, to to garner a, 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 a the third national seed and you know playing and and hosting the the super regionals here uh, on Friday at six thirty p.m. against you know Stanford. Obviously, a, a really really good men's men's tennis program. So. Um, you know, excited for them. I'll uh, I'll be excited to uh, to watch him play because I, I didn't have that opportunity first and second rounds because I was I was out of town. But uh, excited to to see that. And I'm I'm excited to see uh, what I think will be an unbelievable atmosphere. You know, we're trying to create this tailgate like atmosphere um, for for our fans, and, and so it uh, it should be be a lot of fun. But uh, They've had a great year and, and uh, obviously winning the Big 12 championship, but, but now uh, hopefully continue to advance um, on, uh, on Friday night. Was there any discussion, and maybe you can't discuss it, but I have to ask that when you were in Phoenix, whether it was UCF or Houston or Cincinnati, entering the conference perhaps next summer and not the summer after that? Yeah, there, there was conversation, and um, – you know, I, I would, you know, not without, you know, necessarily divulging, you know, top secret um, information. You know, I, I feel good personally. Um, I think there's a good likelihood that, that those three will will join in, in July of, of, uh, of 2023. And, uh, and we'll be on our way. And, uh, you know, we'll navigate 14 teams. For a, for a couple of years and then, you know, get, get down to 12. And, uh, and obviously, you know, the, the conference will have to navigate many more items and including scheduling football and basketball and, and all of our sport programs and, and TV media deal and, and all of those things. But, uh, you know, I'm excited. And, uh, I thought there was a lot of energy in Phoenix, um, with the meetings, uh, we, we had the, the four incoming, they were, they were there, uh, athletic directors, SWAs, football, men's and women's basketball coaches. Uh, and so, uh, I thought it was a, I thought it was a good time for us to be together and, uh, a lot of positivity and, and excitement for the future. Mac Rose, Baylor's director of athletics with us on Sikkim 365 radio, 365 sports. Any new news about a, a, any kind of a date for any kind of turning over the soil for that foster pavilion? Uh, you know, that's a, that's a, a, a great question. Um, you know, breaking ground in June. Um, that's, you know, I feel, um, really confident in, in making that statement. I don't think that's changed. You know, the parking garage that's, that's adjacent to, to Robinson tower has, has already come down. Um, they're beginning to move in the, the construction trailers and putting up fencing. And so, um, you know, a specific date in June, I'm, I'm not aware of, but we'll, we'll definitely break, break the ground in, in, in June and, and then we're, you know, we're making great progress on the uh, on the football development center as well. Mm -hmm. So both both of those projects are going to be really, really cool. Uh, they're going to be be great for for our sport programs and and really um, just the domino effect of of how that that will impact other facilities. It's it's going to have great impact for all 525 of our student athletes. 
you mentioned that when the four new schools show up, and then with Texas and Oklahoma still a part of it, there will be 14 teams. You guys, the Big 12 had to get a waiver to have a championship game in football. And now the Football Oversight Committee, this should be passed later this month by the NCAA Council, recommending to remove restrictions of having divisions. What do you think you'll do early on with the 14 teams? Will there be divisions? Is that what you still expect? It's a great question, Smoke, and, and I think we're still contemplating, um, to, to, be, to be honest with you. I think, you know, we were certainly, obviously, heading, headed down the road in, in terms of the, the two divisions. And, and again, without divulging too much information, you know, I think we were primarily focused um, or we've been primarily focused on, on, you know, seasons 23 and 24 um, and, you know, not necessarily um, thinking a whole lot about when, when we have 12 because there's, there's so much fluid fluidity, you know, um, in, in terms of thinking about how you, how you do your schedule and, your, your new TV partners may may have some thoughts and may, you know, even as far as having some say in that, you know, if you go from four to 12 teams, um, do, you, do you rethink how, how you do all of that? So, again, we've, we've been focused on the 14 teams, headed down two divisions, and then all of a sudden, as you mentioned, there may be this deregulation of, of conference championships and, and, and now giving each conference the autonomy to decide how uh, they determine the, the two teams that play in the championship game. So we kind of hit a pause button, to, to be honest, and uh, let's let's see if if that if that deregulation passes, and then we'll we'll pick it up pretty quickly uh, after that. And uh, and again, you know, if it if it passes, you know, we'll we'll debate obviously two divisions versus versus just one division. I think the the hard piece. Um, and, and again, I'm not, not sharing any trade secrets with, with 14 teams, right? If you do one division, um, you're not going to play four four schools in a year. And, um, and so, you know, how does that feel? Can you really determine, uh, the two best if, if that happens, if that, if that occurs, you know, I don't know. Um, do you, do you be, do you have to think about and and you know look at historical success over you know a five-year period when you begin to think about who plays who um when if if you went with that that one division and so those are all of the things that that we're going to have to 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 vet through and and discuss mac um yeah i just I, i guess i could bring this up the next time that that we have you on the show you know, you look at everything that's going on in college athletics. How do you do what you do and as a group? Is it almost to the point where it's now a 12-month-a-year sport or at least job compared to what used to be at least a handful of downtimes? Yeah, no, I, I appreciate the question, and I know that, that, that what, you're, what, you're, what you're getting at. Certainly, um, everything that, that's happening right now, whether it's the transfer portal or it's name, image, and likeness, and it's the transfer commi- uh, transformation committee and, and maybe, you know, deregulation of, of, of different items and, and things and, and, and the, the litigation, the, the antitrust lawsuits, et cetera. Um, you know, your, your demands on, on uh, your time demands on other things, um, has grown substantially, you, you know, this, this idea of just trying to, to focus on your people and, and focus on your, your student athletes and making sure that we continue to, to prepare champions for, for life. That just seems to be harder and harder in, in this, this distraction, like, you know, wants to pull you away of, of really what your, your core is and your, and your core business is and in, in your and uh and and you're really probably the best way for me to say it is your core purpose so it's you know i'm not gonna lie it's hard um it's hard there is no downtime uh there is no downtime in the summer um now you know since i've been in this business i started in what 1996 i don't i don't remember ever taking a summer off um uh, anyway but 
it's just it's it's part of it but um it there's there's a lot to navigate right now and uh and a lot of conversations and some of them just repetitive one after another one after another which is you can imagine um can can be can be and and certainly gets frustrating so but you know what we'll be resilient um we we uh we and as as in Baylor we're we're going to be we're going to be resilient we're uh we're going to be in in great shape uh there's no doubt in my mind um that uh, we'll continue to be uh nationally relevant no matter no matter you know what field we're we're playing on Mac, a bit of a different topic. Uh, after the quarterback decision was made following spring ball, uh, obviously uh, football going with Blake Shape and his quarterback, Gary Bohannon, went in the portal, but he made his decision. He's heading to South Florida. I was just curious, just your thoughts. I mean, you were around Gary for a while there uh, on the type of person and player that they're going to be getting in Tampa and obviously him moving on to, uh, you know, a new phase in life. Yeah, they, they, they didn't call me, but if they would have, I, I would have told them that uh, first and foremost, uh, they are they're welcoming into their family a a wonderful uh, a great young man uh, a, a young man that you know did all of the right things on and off the field um, and uh, and really probably led more with actions less less with words and uh, and I'm happy for him you know uh, Gary. Um, we're, we're not 12 and two last year, uh, with, without Gary. Um, and, uh, he was instrumental in that, in that success. And, and I know that, you know, everything I just said would be the same sentiments from, from coach Aranda, um, thinks the world of him as well. And, and, uh, you know, we're, we're happy that, that he landed at a, at a great place. And it looks like from, from the outside looking in, uh, a wonderful opportunity for him and uh i wish him nothing uh we wish him nothing but just unbelievable unbelievable success and and then you know the other side of that is we're really excited for blake and and the opportunity that that he has here and uh we uh we certainly expect that that he'll make the most of of that of that opportunity Mac, uh, the NCAA president's job is open. We always ask you if you apply for jobs. That's not what I'm going to ask you. I'm going to ask you, if I applied for that job, can I use you as a reference? No. <laughs> Next. <laughs> that was fast. But because there of was laws, not even a negotiate anything neg- like you didn't rehire There him. wasn't even like a negotiation no, that on was, that. that was a bad ending. That was there, tough. Right? You shouldn't have asked that question. I know. You should not I have asked that question. <laughs> uh, we have more to get to next week. I know you can't wait, and uh, and so we'll let you off the hook here early than normal. Thank I, you for your time. <laughs> can I can I add one thing? And and I appreciate all of you, but um, and I know that you guys talked about it, but but I was out of town. But I just again, congratulations to to Felicia Mulkey and in our acrobatics and tumbling team, yeah. seven straight national championships. Um, it's only eleven straight for for fee um but just uh really 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 proud of, of them and you know they're on their way to be becoming a a ncaa championship sport with uh with adding two teams the 41st and 42nd team and so once they be, begin competing uh they'll garner ncaa uh championship status but um man just so excited for for our uh for our, our student athletes and, and for Felicia Mulkey and the, and the staff. Well, that that's that's great. I'm glad you brought that brought that up because of NIL and because of where 95 percent of the money is going to most likely football and men's basketball. Do you feel like there'll ever be a blowback from anything Title IX on where the money's going in the NIL, and that will that ever affect the budgeting or the revenue flow into the other sports that are not revenue sports? Yeah, it's a it's a that's a lot to unpack, but it's a it's a really it's a really good question, and um, you know um, it's you know I, I don't know because name, image, and likeness and those monies are coming into the system from third party. Um, I don't know if that can or will in in some way. Uh, you know, impact, you know, title nine gender, gender equity. 
where where I worry is, you know, do we ever get to a place where, you know, now um, equivalency sports become full, full scholarship sports? And how do you begin to start affording all of this? And then what do those numbers look like? Um, and now um, are we going to have to start, you know, eliminating uh, sports to, to be able to, to, you know, cost containment? And how does that impact, you know, gender, gender equity balance, et cetera? And, you know, I, I, I think I may have mentioned this on this, on this show, but, you know, there, there's, there's a lot of great things about the NCAA. Three that come to mind real quick are, are college football Saturdays, the, the NCAA men's and women's basketball tournaments, and then the opportunity that's been afforded uh, young women be, because of, um, you know, Title IX gender equity has, has been tremendous for this, for this country. And, uh, and we, we can't go backwards and we, we can't mess that up. Thank you, Mac. Appreciate your time, and uh, look forward to talking to you again. Mac Rhodes, Director of Athletics at Baylor, part of that huge meeting, the meetings down in the Phoenix over the last part of last week, and uh, a lot of insight with that as well.